Yeah, uh, right. He had a conflict. Uh, good evening, everybody. I want to welcome you to the uh, February 25th uh, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Just have a, uh, one new business item tonight, a little bit of housekeeping to do in the meantime. Um, officially, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, next order of business is to elect officers, to elect a chair, uh, vice chair, and secretary. Um, I don't know if the, the board has any particular thoughts on who might serve in those roles or continue to serve in those roles. I'm happy to uh, continue as chair unless uh, somebody is, uh, is fired up to take my place. I would make a motion that Mike Valancourt continues as chair and Aaron Mosher continues as vice chair. Second. And who is our secretary? And do, do we need a secretary? No. Do we have a secretary? That, that's what our bylaws say. I, All right, I then uh, how Aaron. about Matt Caton as secretary? Second. We have a second. Uh, discussion. All in favor? That is unanimous. The motion carries. Great. Let's move on to the uh, minutes of the October 22nd meeting. Any uh, thoughts, comments, revisions on those uh, particular minutes? Um, just a note, I'll, I'll abstain. I was not at that meeting. Yeah. Hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the October 22nd, 2019 meeting. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. Very good. Uh, uh, Chair, friendly amendment. I, I too will uh, abstain. I was not at that meeting. Very good. Very good. Uh, hearing no further discussion on the draft minutes, all in favor of approving the October 22nd minutes? Very good. Uh, that is unanimous as far as those who were in attendance. Uh, we have no old business, so we will move on to uh, new business, uh, which is somewhat old business. I know this is a somewhat renewed application uh, from what we heard, I think, several months ago. And this is to hear the request of Patty and Reed Gramsey, owners of the property at 12 Connor Lane, map U14, lot 32 for a variance to allow their house to expand an additional 5% in the RP1 buffer based on section 19-4-5.A.5 of the zoning ordinance. And I'll turn to our code enforcement officer, Ben McDougall, who may be able to offer us a little bit of uh, background on the application. Sure, uh, Mr. 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 and Mrs. Gramsey came to me almost a year ago uh, asking for a building permit to enclose a space so that they'd be able to uh, have a weather tight area to walk between the garage and the house. And they are non-conforming with respect to the resource protection wetland behind the house. And the house has already been expanded to the 25%. There's a provision in the zoning ordinance to be able to expand up to 40% with a variance from this board. On June 25th of last year, they were in front of this board uh, seeking the variance using a, a different method of approval, and that variance was denied, and they're back uh, using a different method for approval of the variance tonight. Very good. Uh, we will turn to uh, the applicant, who I understand is... is um, represented by council. That is correct, Mr. Chair and members of the board. I'm John Bannon. I'm from Murray Plum and Murray in Portland. And I'm here tonight representing both of the Gramsies in their capacity as the property owners, but primarily Reed Gramsey as the applicant for a disability variance. Um, ben had uh, uh, hopefully, in a way, uh, brought up a procedural issue that uh, we might need to address before we uh, address the merits of the case, uh, having to do with uh, the provision in your ordinance that uh, precludes the, the CBA from hearing an appeal of similar import 
sort of whatever that means. Um, I've attempted to explic ex explicate that in my letter, but uh, that's somewhat obscure. But even if it is of similar ex uh, import, the board is uh, permitted to hear an appeal uh, within one year of a previous denial, owing either to a misunderstanding of the facts, which caused an injustice to be done, or that a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient, sufficient to warrant reconsideration. Now, I'm not saying that the board itself made a mistake of fact uh, in its prior decision. Regrettably, I'd have to agree with your prior decision uh, with regard to the undue hardship variance uh, and the other uh, factual findings that you made at that point. But at that time, you did not know uh, of the circumstances uh, of Mr. Gramsci's health. And uh, for, uh, I think you may know uh, that uh, the, the details of a disability variance are intended to be confidential, so it's a little difficult to discuss them in public um, and then keep them confidential, but I'll, I'll try to be as, as, as nondescript as possible. Um, in any event, um, you did not know that uh, when Mr. Gramsci was here previously that he does in fact uh, suffer from a disability as uh, defined by ordinary dictionary definitions and by uh, the state statute, uh, the main uh, Human Rights Act, um, which uh, uh, is different from his prior argument that uh, seemingly that he and his wife simply wished to age in place. This is a different kind of an argument. It's a different kind of a variance. Uh, Mr. Gramsci has no requirement of showing undue hardship. He only needs to show that he meets the criteria of uh, section 19-5-2.B.2, uh, which is disability variances in the uh, shoreland zone. Does the board wish me to address uh, the, uh, the one year uh, stay issue or uh, is the board satisfied that there is cause to go on? My sense is that the board should should discuss that. I think okay. your, your correspondence that was submitted as part of right. the record did a very good job of explaining uh, the lay of the land on that. Mm -hmm. um, I myself don't feel that we need an awful lot more explanation from you on that piece, right. but we'll yeah. probably bifurcate and consider that okay. first. And, and that's me speaking somewhat out of school, but we'll see if the board agrees with me. Good enough. And I, I really don't have anything to add to the letter. Um, the, I presented legal arguments and factual arguments uh, that would justify the board, uh, well, partially uh, require the board, but at least justify the board in finding that it could uh, hear this appeal within one year, either because these are appeals of a different import or because uh, either there's a mis been a misunderstanding of the facts or a change in some essential aspect of the case. I'd be glad to enter, answer any questions about that argument, however. Uh, is it the will of the board to hear the remainder of the presentation and then we'll take up both of those issues once we close for deliberation? Uh, to the extent that Attorney Bannon has anything to say on the actual application itself as opposed to this threshold issue? I'm, I'm fine with that approach, um, taking it up, or continuing the presentation and taking up you know, each question independently. Uh, that, that's fine with me, I think that is logical. Okay, I don't think we need to vote on it, I'm getting head nods, um, so okay. please feel free to continue. Very good, uh, it sounds like the, I'm sure the board is familiar with your disability variance standards, uh, which authorize the board to grant a variance for the purpose of making the applicant's dwelling accessible to him or her, if the applicant has a disability, is living in the dwelling unit, and the variance uh, that the applicant is seeking is limited to, in this case, the construction of structures necessary for access to or egress from the dwelling by the applicant with the disability. As I've explained in my letter, uh, uh, Mr. Gramsci does have a condition that is uh, classified as a disability, uh, both by uh, common definition and by state law. It's uh, a condition that uh, limits his, uh, his ability to balance himself even on dry surfaces. 
but obviously more so on icy or snowy surfaces. Um, and also uh, because of the balancing issue uh, impairs his ability to walk and, and otherwise protect himself as he's trying to, um, to navigate icy and snowy uh, surfaces. Uh, the solution that uh, Mr. Grams has come up with, and it would seem to be uh, certainly an appropriate solution, perhaps the only solution, is to, well, well I, the background, which some of you already know, is that the, the, uh, the Gramsci residence is exposed on the, its northeastern side uh, to the, the northeasterly winds, which uh, there are no trees between it and the ocean. And because of that reason, when there are bad storms, the, the wind just comes piling through there and the, the wind comes through there and piles snow and ice onto the steps. Uh, in the walkways of the Gramsci residence that uh, are now used to pass between the garage and the residence. Right now, uh, the, Mr. Gramsci has to, in order to get to his house from the road, uh, enter his garage, well, exit his vehicle, walk down a set of stairs, traverse a brick walkway, and then enter his house. That is the area that is uh, uh, slippery uh, because of buildups of snow and ice. What's being proposed is essentially a means to uh, prevent those walkways from being exposed to snow or ice uh, during the winter time. Uh, it also, it's going to be lit. Uh, that, that particular detail was not, uh, I think, before you before, but obviously it would need to be illuminated in order uh, to allow safe passage. And it also would include handrails uh, to allow uh, Mr. Gramsci to stabilize himself as he's walking from the garage to the house or vice versa. So we have a, a person with a recognized disability um, who uh, uh, is seeking a variance in order to uh, render his access to his dwelling safe uh, in the same sense that a, a the most typical example of these things is a handicapped access ramp. In this case, it's not a question of, of absolute mobility, but safe mobility, and that's certainly uh, comprised within the sort of values that the Maine Human Rights Act and the ADA you know, seek to protect. Um, there are not terribly many criteria for this, uh, for this variance in your ordinance. Um, there is not much more that I feel I need to add. Um, if, if, the, if the board has follow-up questions, um, I would be glad to answer them. Hopefully we won't have to get into any particular detail about Mr. Ramsey's health, but uh, if you need to do that, then we'll do that too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there questions at the moment for uh, Attorney Ban Bannon on behalf of the applicant? I have. Um, from the, the written papers suggest that uh, Mr. Gramsci knew of his circumstances at, in June, but chose not to disclose them That's uh, for correct. privacy reasons. Uh, there's something that you said in your presentation that suggested he was just learning about it. No, okay. that's not what I mean to say. Um, uh, what I do mean to say is that uh, talking about one's health in public is not a pleasant issue, um, particularly matters of this sort. Um, uh, Mr. Gramsci was aware of the issue previously, but I think if any of you has a disability or knows anybody who has a disability or cares about anybody with a disability, would understand why he would bring that up uh, as a last resort. Um, so he, he certainly has known about it for many years. He was hoping that uh, he would be able to obtain the variance without having to mention this aspect of his life. But since that was impossible, and I do not fault the board for its uh, decision on undue hardship, here we are. Uh, it's time to disclose the reasons for the disability variance and let you decide it. Um, I have just uh, one further question. It, if the, the, the board were to approve this tonight, how long would it take to get the walkway constructed? That I do not know. Uh, and perhaps my clients don't know either because they have been somewhat reluctant to 
pursue the details of it without having an approval, but do you have uh, a ballpark idea? That my client just answered that he doesn't know how long it would take. Um, I, given the simplicity of the structure, one would hope not a long time. Uh, contractors can be difficult to line up, but I, this is certainly not a, a long, uh, a lengthy project. So, but at this point, it's not con it wouldn't be contemplated to get it done before the end of the winter season? That is what they are hoping to do, yes. Okay. Or, or else we wouldn't bother to come back. Uh, I have a couple quick questions. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about a walkway. Uh, yeah. it, it, can you elaborate a little more on the structure? Is this a foundation conditioned space? Is this strictly three sides with handrails and illumination? Do we have a sense of what that is yet? Well, we don't have engineering drawings. We do have uh, some uh, architectural drawings of it that we presented. I take it you've seen those. I've, I've seen those. It was just a little tough for me to tell from those. I understand. Uh, I don't I understand just, there to be any foundation planned. Uh, there is certainly lateral support that would have to go into the ground uh, to support these walls and so forth. Um, but am I, am I correct, Reed, that, uh, well, if you are contemplating a foundation, just say so. But. Right, and my client said he hoped that they would not have to do that. And then just my second question, I want to make sure we're reading off the same thing. Um, your letter, second paragraph of 1952B2, which you quote here, the Zoning Board of Appeals, et cetera, ending with the word disability. Uh, the zoning code I have has another sentence at the end of that. Right, it okay. does. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that well, your, your quote that here wasn't intended to be the full complete No, the, the board has discretion to limit the, the variance in various ways, including the, the manner uh, indicated in the sentence that I have omitted, but I would respectfully submit that it doesn't make sense uh, to impose a condition of, uh, of making this a temporary sort of arrangement. This is, although yeah, we hope it will not take long to build, nevertheless a very expensive uh, uh, construction for the property and not certain, uh, certainly not something that one would likely want to be uh, required to remove when uh, they, re uh, they themselves vacate the residence. So I believe that a uh, loose estimate was uh, something on the order of $25,000, but um, I, uh, we're not sure about that yet because we've not had the approval. Does that help? Uh, yep, yeah, understood. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that I was reading, we were reading off the exact sure. same section here. Yep. So thank you. I just wanted to point out, just looking at the architectural drawings, it's it's likely that the building code will require some foundation work to build that. Okay. Okay. Um, again, I, I wish we had the construction details, but uh, and I'll, I won't say this again, but without the approval to go forward, the, 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 Ramsey, the Ramseys have not seen the need or the, the rationale for finalizing the plans. And, and if the board were to approve, a, a obviously hypothetical at this stage in the game, then code enforcement would be tasked with, with uh, supervising and ensuring that, that any building was done to code. Enforcement. Right, they, they would still need a building permit for it uh, once, uh, the, if, once the variance was approved. Further questions for the applicant? All right, hearing none, thank, thank you, Attorney Bannon. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to direct any additional questions we may have. To, okay, to, so to, shall I sit down at this point? Okay, thank you. Please do. Before we open the floor up to public comments, uh, my understanding is that uh, the town did not receive, the code enforcement uh, did not receive any comments via email, any phone calls on this application, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. okay, we will open this up to public comment. Members of the public are willing, are, are welcome, I should say, to come forward and speak to the extent that you feel the need to do so. And please just uh, state your name, if you would, before you offer your comments. My name is Richard Berman, I live at 58. Hannaford Cove Road in the neighborhood. Um, and my background was uh, I was a real estate development before that a landscape architect. I have looked at the plans and I want to remind your board that um, 
the improvements they're making actually are good for the environment. There'll be less impervious surface after these improvements are done. They're taking out some walkways, and I know this is uh, within so many feet of wetland, <clears throat> so that's positive uh, for the environment, and I didn't want to lose sight of that. And then the only other second thing I want to talk about is I just had a hip replacement, <laughs> so I'm very sensitive to aging in place. And maybe you don't have ordinances yet but I, uh, that address that. But I know there is a movement in Cape Elizabeth to start to be a community that's uh, well, you know, uh, accommodating people that uh, need to age in place. And I'm one of them. So that's a sensitivity <clears throat> that I think we all should have. And that's about all I've got. So I support this wholeheartedly. And I want to keep my neighbors where they are. Thank you. Good. Thank you for your comments. Any other public comments? All right, hearing none, we will close the, uh, the public comment portion of the meeting and move on to uh, deliberations. Uh, as we discussed earlier, it seems appropriate to first address the renewed proceedings provision of the ordinance, which is section 9-5-3E to determine whether we feel that uh, this matter is, is ripe for consideration and given the, the wording of that particular uh, passage. I'm happy to share my thoughts on this. I mean, I, I think the intent of, of this section really is to discourage um, you know, the same item coming up again and again in rapid succession. Here we're looking at, it's been seven months, I believe, um, since this was presented. Uh, to me, m making the applicant wait another three months just doesn't make a lot of practical sense. I do also think that, uh, that the argument that it really is a different fact situation holds true. So I, I would be supportive of, of um, you know, listening to this application at this point, I think it's ripe. And I'll jump in, I, I agree. I'm not even so sure that this provision applies. Um, I know that Attorney Bannon talked about the term similar import. Uh, obviously this it's, it's somewhat similar in that we're talking about a similar construction, prop, uh, a similar construction project on the same property but it is brought under an entirely different section of the ordinance with respect to the variance. So I too would be supportive of us moving forward with considering the, the application on its merits. Mr. Chair, uh, I think it is the same application. How, <laughs> but however, I, 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 at the end of the day, I agree that uh, under, under Mr. Bannon's argument that a, a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case to sufficient, or excuse me, to sufficient to warrant reconsideration. Uh, uh, in my opinion, that's what we're falling under. Um, at the end of the day, I think we're getting to the same place. Okay. Um, just two points. One, the, one of the reasons that this provision, I think, is in there is that to alleviate the, the burden that the board would have uh, if there's other applications that we have to deal with. I, you're, you're pushing me in, in ahead of the queue. Actually, we don't see a lot of business, as it were, so <laughs> that, that's not a concern here. And the second is that I think there is a mistake, uh, there's two sections, uh, of misunderstanding of fact, because I, I went back and this, I watched the videotape of the first hearing, and there was a discussion about the disability, and the disability that was represented was an age disability. And so, I don't think that was a full airing of that issue. Um, so I, I'm also thinking that this certainly falls into the last section, some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant consideration. I'm going to chime in. Um, I, with regard to whether this is a similar import or not, I think it is similar import. When I look at the term similar import, it seems to me it means does it have the same physical impact as the prior? Um, application did, or have there been some changes in the physical circumstances? And so, the instance, the impact on the environment is exactly the same. I would say it's certainly of uh, similar import. With regard to the um, uh, whether it's a misunderstanding of fact or not, I wasn't aware of that. I, I, the, the applicant hasn't spoken to 
whether they misunderstood um, the rules for disability or not. I understood that it was a conscious decision on their part not to do that, so I wouldn't normally think that would be a, a misunderstanding of, of fact. But with regard to the kind of the catch-all, um, some essential aspect of the case, I mean, that's really broad. And I think it gives us enough discretion to go ahead and allow this application. Is this something that, that we need to vote on? Do you, that you want a motion and to move forward? I think we should. Let's, let's okay. do that. Well, I would, I would make a motion that we um, allow the uh, hearing of the application within the one year period. I don't need, I don't think we need to find a specific reason. I think just say it's, it's fine. I'll second. All right, uh, further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor of the motion. Carries unanimously. All right, let's move on to the substantive issue here. Where we apply uh, the variance standard found in section 19-5-1B. One, and I guess that's under F. Does that sound right, Ben? I think it's your section wrong. Okay. <laughs> what, what do you got? What do you got? Uh, Nineteen dash five dash two dot. B uh, two because this is in the shoreland. Oh, 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 oh yes. Good, good. Gotcha. Excellent. Thank you. So that that's correct. Nineteen dash five dash two dot B dot two is the section that applies that we should uh, consider the the substantive um, application under. And are there uh, comments from the board on that? I just wonder if maybe we should, without objection, just stipulate that the disability exists and we don't need to continue board discussion on that point if, if people are comfortable with that. Because that would be the section, I think, you know, yeah. that's why we're considering under this. So I think we would kind of, kind of just, <laughs> by the very nature of what we're saying, stipulate that that's the case. But um, yeah, I don't finding. know that we want to make a finding. Yeah, I, I, and I see a lot. I saw, see head nodding. I think here, so I, we can probably incorporate that in our yeah. finding of fact. Perfect. And and maybe even into into our ultimate motion. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not really interested in debating. Yeah, yeah whether, that, I'm not either. That, yeah. That's. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll take the applicant uh, at, at their word. Applicants at their word on that. Yep. <laughs> So I kind of have two thoughts on this as I read this. The first was, the first was around the word necessary, which uh, which isn't defined as this. And um, so I went to I think it was Merriam-Webster was uh, uh, Attorney Bandit's choice of um, dictionary, and and that definition was absolute. The definition of necessary was absolutely required. I don't know that I'd necessarily consider that to be my definition of necessary, um, but that was one thing that that I struggled with a little bit here is, you know, is what's being proposed necessary for access to or egress from the dwelling? I, it may be, and, and you know, I, I think that there is a fair case to be made that you need it covered on four sides, which are three sides plus the ground, which is kind of why I was asking about the foundation. What does this structure look like? Is it, you know, a roof that, that's open or is it covered on four sides? Is it, a, you know, effectively an addition with a foundation and conditioned space? Um, and then the second part, which is, you know, if we were going to limit the variance to the duration of, of the, you know, disability, which, you brought up the ramp example. That's kind of the classic example of a structure that's built to accommodate access or, or you know, egress. Um, this is a little more than that. So 
if it's a structure limited to the time period of the disability, frankly, I don't have that much of a, you know, care what the structure is as long as it's actually legitimately helping for access or, you know, uh, access or regress. If we're not going to limit it, my concern is setting a precedent um, that it is a, you know, that at one point, you know, you're adding 140 square feet, I believe, um, to the structure, 5% on top of the 25%, and is that going to be something that carries forward and, and is precedent going forward? Um, I will say, in, in one point too, you know, as we look at ordinances, I absolutely think and, and would recommend that the next time the ordinance comes up, uh, a provision be included that um, uh, that if there is detached access to or egress from a house, that that uh, that somehow be incorporated into the future, um, because that is, I think, a key thing in this town to allow people to age in place, and I think as a public policy, we want to encourage people to age in place. Um, and maybe that could have been dealt with at the original, you know, 25 percent. Not that there was any, you know, notion at that time that this would be required. So I, I, I'm of a couple of minds of this. Um, I want to find a way to approve this, and, and I don't want it to be burdensome at the end of the day by making what really should be a permanent structure and a very expensive structure temporary. And that's my struggle, and I'm not, I'm not sure how I box that out yet, but I wanted to throw that out as kind of my struggle with this. I, I want to try to find a way to make this work within the language we have here. And I may, I may be alone in that, uh, <laughs> that opinion. Um, I guess you know, I'm having a similar s struggle as well. I mean, I wasn't, in, I wasn't here in June when the board um, denied the permit, but at that time, you, the board denied a permanent structure. And now the applicant is coming in under a different exception, which specifically calls out that it should, you know, that we should consider at least whether this structure should be made temporary. So I don't know if, it, if we're, I don't think we're mandated, to, of course, to, 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 um, uh, to make it temporary, but, uh, you know, we are coming in under this narrower exception for, um, uh, to, to allow uh, this structure where we, we refused to allow it back in June. So I'm troubled by that. I don't, again, I'm not, I don't know the practicalities of coming up with something that's um, temporary and not, you know, just so impractical or worthless that would, would make no sense to impose. I'll hop in here for a minute. And I, I know from the attachments to attorneys, attorney Bannon's, letter we can have sort of have the before and after and what i see are are it's an uncovered naked if you will stairway leading into the garage i believe that's the situation um i consider myself to be pretty fit and nimble and i myself have a hard time sometimes particularly with a good nor'easter blowing scrambling, scrambling up and down icy and snowy stairs uh, I also I have a, a good friend who, who has MS, and I understand the mobility issues that exist almost irrespective, uh, and that begin to exist almost ir irrespective of what the weather conditions are. Uh, my sense is that strict application of the ordinance would indeed cause undue hardship given the disability, and and uh, I think that, uh, that this structure is is necessary under the circumstances. Uh, the ordinance itself says that the board may, not shall, but may impose conditions on the variance, including limiting the variance to, and duration uh, of the disability at a time that the applicant with a disability lives on the property. If we were to approve the application, I, I will support approval myself. Uh, I, I don't think that, uh, that those sorts of conditions are appropriate here. I don't think it would do anybody any good to to, uh, to uh, uh, install a, a plywood, tar paper, stairwell entryway. Um, it's not gonna do the applicants any good, it's not gonna do the neighborhood any good. 
it's going to cause more problems with, with Ben and, sort, and dealing with uh, code enforcement issues, with building permit issues. So I, I fully support the application um, without condition. I'll take my turn here. Um, I, I agree with everything you said, Mike. Um, I, with regard to the, you know, whether or not the board should grant a variance uh, for, for making it accessible, um, I think this is kind of a, a perfect case of where we, we can approve something and it's gonna help someone with a, with a clear disability access their house. I think, you know, the ramp is the classic example, but in my mind, this is, you know, achieves very similar results. Uh, and again, and with regard to the, whether or not this is a temporary or permanent measure, I, I agree with, with what you said there. I, I don't think it makes much sense to, with, with a ramp, something that's easy to remove, um, I think it, it probably does make sense in that case. Um, in this case, I, I think there are several reasons why why it doesn't make sense. Um, because of the number one, because of, of the the foundation that's going to be required, and I mean they're building a permanent structure here. Well, why why have why have it removed um, at a later date? So uh, I'm in agreement. I, I support will support the application um, without the condition on uh, permanency. I'll chime in. I can chime. It's, yes, please. I agree with everything said. I would probably dismiss any talk of a ramp because I don't think there's any room or it'd be quite steep. So it's my two cents. Further comments from the board? I'll also echo the similar sentiments from the other board members. This, the, uh, the main house is 10 to 15 feet below the road level. Um, I'm not sure if those are leaves or bricks, but um, obviously during the winter, and um, a lot of debris from the winter will get thrown down there. So I can see why there would be a need to, to enclose that. The current picture on exhibit E, uh, there's an overhang, uh, it, which is essentially just enclosing that, uh, and then adding a structure over the set of stairs out to the back of the garage and connecting the two. So it's not a, an extensive, um, Expansion. That said, the um, I'm not sure how this would benefit a subsequent owner, um, and other than it's just an enclosed walkway from the garage to the house. Um, if they wiped out both the garage and the house and started scra from scratch, I mean, it would be an odd footprint to build to build on. Um, so I, I have no restrictions or conditions for this application either. I think this is um, we we take as uh, as. What was submitted in the application is truthful. Uh, applicant is represented by, represented by counsel. Uh, they made the uh, substantial submission on two, um, the letter of the January 17th, as well as the main application itself. Um, I think there's good reasons to, to move along. Sorry, if we need it, just if we wanted to have a code section. It's the, the purpose of the code, 19.1.2 purpose. And they, they're talking about the ordinance itself is to promote health, safety, and general welfare of the residents of Cape Elizabeth. And then there's a couple other provisions in here. Um, you know, provide safety from fire as well as other hazards. So I would consider, um, you know, we don't have snow all year long, but there is a several months where this would be an issue there. So certainly that would apply there. I think everybody has had their say, uh, and, and I think we've got a, a pretty clear, uh, not a consensus of, of direction in which we're headed. So I would entertain a motion to approve the request of Patty and Reed Ramsey, owners of the property at 12 Cunner Lane, map U14, lot 32, for a variance to allow their house to expand an additional 5% in the RP1 buffer based on sections 19-4-5.8.5 and 19-5-2.2 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, Chair, can we have a friendly um, point of order? Sure. Can we just 
go through just for our internal purposes the requirements for the variance rather than jumping to that next stage. But wouldn't we do that in our findings of fact? Um, well, it seems like that we're already making a decision to go forward without even considering what we're considering. I'm, I'm happy to hear you out. Um, so what provision do you believe is the variance requirements that's necessary for the board to consider? 19-5-2.2, uh, which relates to the uh, disability variance. Uh, am I in code? It's page 1661? Yes. Okay. All right. So they're talking about the variance, but what is the criteria? It's A through C? I'm sorry, A through D? That's the that's criteria for a typical variance that is not a disability-related yeah, variance. That's, that's the definition of undue hardship, and the, the last paragraph of that sentence says we may grant a variance uh, without a finding uh, that a strict application of the ordinance uh, would cause undue hardship. So it, as was presented in the application, uh, I'm of the belief that those are not applicable if we are, if we are uh, categorizing this as a, a variance uh, because of a disability. And, and I, I agree. I, I agree. think we yeah. need to address those. All right, so we're so, getting to the corner, which is the only provision that is relevant is the bottom third on page 61. Yep. Yes. And I think Mr. Bannon made the point there are very few requirements to. Yep. I mean, I think the finding of fact this. is literally that, that sentence, finding that a strict application of the ordinance to the applicant would cause undue hardship. I think that's really the major finding of fact. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, board members. For that. We've addressed, addressed the issue. Thank you. Great. So I, I put forth the language for, for a motion. I think that, uh, that that's been recorded. Um, that that, and and uh, I would uh, welcome somebody to make the, the motion as stated, as previously stated. You don't have to recite the whole thing. I think it's part of the record. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Great. Uh, further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Right. Carries unanimous, unanimously. Uh, we will move on to findings of fact. Um, proposed finding of fact one. 12 Connor Lane is a non-conforming lot in, uh, in the RA district. The lot is also in the RP1 district and the house is a non-conforming structure as it relates to the RP1 district. Proposed finding of fact two, a portion of the lot is in the Shoreland Overlay District, but no part of the proposed project occurs within the Shoreland Overlay District. Proposed finding of fact three, this house was expanded by 25% already and now the applicant would like to expand the house by an additional 5%. Zoning ordinance section 19-4-5.a.5 allows up to a 40% expansion if a variance is granted. I, think I, would, I would offer just a friendly amendment just on, on number three, um, adding approximately before the 25% and the 5%. I don't know that we know that those are exact numbers. I see no, no problems with that. Um, are there any concerns from other members of the board with that post amendment? Hearing none, consider that as a friendly amendment. Uh, and then I think we, we want a couple of additional findings here as well based on our discussion. probably should address the renewed proceedings and um, perhaps we, uh, this is proposed finding of fact four, um, pursuant to section 19-5-2.
Oh, no, I'm sorry. I think it's 1953. 1953E. E. There we go. Wait, there we go. I'm e. like one section off tonight in all my references. <laughs> so thank you for your, for your assistance here. Uh, so pursuant to that section, uh, and this is proposed finding of fact four, uh, a change has taken, uh, there has been um, a misunderstanding of fact or a change has taken place in some essential aspect of this case and application, in this case, sufficient to warrant reconsideration. somebody tell me not to propose finding of fact five. I'm going to try to get my sections right this, this time. Pursuant to section 19-5-2.B.2, the board finds that the applicant suffers from a disability and strict application of the ordinance to the application to the applicant and the applicant's property would cause undue hardship and the application recites improvements necessary for the applicant's access to or egress from the dwelling by the applicant with the disability. Thoughts, additions, corrections, uh, friendly amendments, uh, unfriendly amendments? I, I, I think you might want to mention if you didn't that the applicant has a disability. Did, I, I think did. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm implicit. Could you, could you read to me number four, which was the previous one? That was... That was the renewed proceedings one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So pursuant. I, I, I mean, what, what I'm, I want to make, in, in my opinion, there was, I, I know what this section says, but in my opinion, uh, there was not a misunderstanding of fact. Okay. And I, I, I thought I heard you um, include that as I did. part of the rationale. And I don't, I, again, I, we can discuss this a little, but in, in my opinion, a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant reconsideration. But I, I, don't, I, I don't think we misunderstood facts last time. I think that's correct. And I think your comments are consistent with the commentary from the board members generally. So if we uh, then, uh, I'll suggest then that the proposed finding of fact read pursuant to 19-5-3.E, um, a change has taken place in some essential aspect of the case sufficient to warrant reconsideration. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as it relates to five, I almost wonder if it's worth breaking that up into a couple just for clarity, you know, with, with maybe five being you know, the, the board is considered evidence um, sufficient, you know, to establish that the applicant has a disability. Um, one of the other things is you know, the board has, has uh, received evidence that the applicant um, lives at the property, which is another part of okay. that. Are you saying that's all? That's that's five. No, that well, what the first one would be five. The second one would be six. Just to kind of make clear, like sure. these are these are discrete yep. facts. And then you know seven, the one that um, you know a strict application of the ordinance to the applicant and the applicant's property would cause undue hardship, because that way we're saying okay, we've met. The disability requirement. We've met the living at the property requirement. We've met the undue hardship requirement. Uh, you don't like that. I take exception to that because we, we are not finding that an undue hardship. Uh, there is an undue hardship. There's a uh, the definition for undue hardship uh, includes the provision that the land in question cannot yield a reasonable re return unless a variance is granted. I mean, these are the well, that's these are all the the I, criteria that we looked at last time and we denied it. So. What this section says is we, we do not have to find 
Uh, oh, the, yeah, that without a finding, yes. We do not have to find that there's an undue hardship. You're right, right. and I misspoke on that. Yeah, yeah. I misspoke okay. on that. I misspoke on that. So, so let, let's go back through what I think are five, six, and seven, just so the record is clear. And yes. Yes. So, all right. So, five. Five is that the board has has um, what, did, what did I say received before? It. Received evidence that the applicant has a disability. I think we just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Six is the board has received evidence that the applicant lives at the property. And if we want to say as required under this section, we can, but I think it, it, either way. Yeah, we we'll pro probably just can limit it to the, the yeah. applicant. Yeah, actually, uh, the applicant lives at the, at the property, property mm -hmm. resides at the, at the dwelling. Um, and uh, the board shall, and, and the board is restricting, the, uh, we could, I don't know how we want to say this, but the, reboard, the board is restricting the variance uh, for the purpose of making the dwelling accessible. As uh, due to the fact that the uh, proposed improvement is necessary for, for access, access to or egress, yeah. or egress from the dwelling by the applicant with a disability. We'll, we'll read these closely. Yeah. 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 Approving these next time. So I, I think we. If that all sounds good to me, obviously we'll. we'll uh, entertain a formal motion to approve the proposed findings of fact as uh, just read into the record uh, by the zoning board members. Uh, anybody care to make such a motion? So moved. Okay, wait a second. Very good. Uh, further discussion on the proposed findings? All in favor? All right, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you all for your patience uh, and, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think the only remaining item, uh, Ben, was the re uh, review of the 2020 meeting calendar. I don't know if there's anything we need to do there. If, if no one has any other conflicts, we could just discuss the November, December situation that seemed, seemed to have worked the past several years to combine those meetings into the first or second Wednesday of December. That, that, that works well for me. Works, yeah, works which for me. works for me. First or second. I have a slight so preference maybe for the first week of, of if December it, if possible. It would be December 2nd or December 9th. Does anybody, so Thanksgiving is the 26th? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yes, Thanksgiving Day is the 26th. I'm fine with either the 2nd or the 9th. 2nd or 9th? I like the 2nd. You like Probably the 2nd? The earlier the better, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. okay, I'll go, I'll, I'll try for that one. Anything further on the calendar? I think, we I think all the other meetings will be standard. We've got a system. We do. Okay. Great. We'll adjourn. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you.